The class of 71 of West Mecklenburg High School in Charlotte, North Carolina was a special one. For years, the city of Charlotte had resisted court orders to integrate the schools by busing in black students. But in 1970, the federal court finally ordered the buses to roll. On the whole, it was not a very good year for the class of 71. We wondered how they turned out. So last October, we went down to Charlotte for their 20th reunion, homecoming weekend at West Mecklenburg High. On the count of three. One, two, and three. Thank you all What a much. difference two decades makes. <laughs> Those 17-year-olds are almost middle-aged. Where did the time go? Where did my hair go? That's the kind of talk you get at reunions. But just scratch at the memory of the class of 71, and the nostalgia evaporates. The busing began in September of 1970. 350 black students brought over to the predominantly white West Met. Within days, there was chaos. It was black against white, but the issue that brought it on, I think more so than anything else, was that we were forced to do this. For Foy Pratt and Dell Wisnant, the memories are not sweet. I can't think of anyone that could, in all honesty, say it was the best times of our life. Uh, it, it wasn't fun. The tension, uh, you could feel the tension in the air. The black people felt like that we were their enemy, and unfortunately, we felt like they were our enemy. West Mech sits in the middle of comfortable white suburbia, the focus of the community. Back in 71, three of the brightest sparks at the school were Sandy Bass, Linda Small, and Suzanne Price. Among them, they were student body president, Carousel Prince, hospitality club chairwoman, the Spanish club, the political science club, teen board, cheerleader, and future homemakers of America, the pride of West Mech. Our little community, it was just so close knit. We were a little clique here, and all of a sudden, there was all these people we didn't know. Most of our parents were in the same social Clicks. They all were in the, you know, like the Optimist Club, the Garden Club. We went to similar churches, and, and all of a sudden, we had nothing in common with these people. I know that we, at this school, didn't make them feel real welcome at first. I don't think we were necessarily real welcoming. <laughs> we were, you know, we were 17 years old thinking about ourselves. And I approached one of them, and I said, I know this isn't where you want to go to school, but I hope you'll like it. You know? And boy, he came down on me hard. <laughs> He said, you are so lame. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I, I felt his anger. He didn't want to be here. I really feel like an outsider. Glenn Michael Aaron tried to become an insider. He joined the choir. I was sitting down one day, and then uh, all of a sudden, uh, my chair uh, was hit in the back, and I went crashing in the floor. And uh, when I got up and I turned around, uh, three gentlemen were... Uh, kind of laughing and then I loudly spoke out and stated that one of them was going to apologize me or I was going to pop someone in the mouth. One thing led to another and a race riot was soon underway. It was mass hysteria and, and I backed up and I said, my lands, I've got to get out of here. And when I turned around, Lord knows, I got caught with a elbow right here in the, in the mouth. Mike Dye was also in the class of 71, also in the choir. This was the first time he'd seen Glenn Aaron in 20 years. It was really like a big There was somebody that was taking their coat off and had their arms down. So I hit him, and the next thing I knew, I was hit and went to the floor. When I stood up, there was the guy beside me got hit over the head with a chair, and blood went everywhere. Did you two hit each other? I remember, I I remember, Mike hit hit, me. I remember hitting him. Yeah. Well, oh. you're, you're, you're two choir boys, right? Well, yeah, we had and had class. This, this that, is also that same West Mecklenburg day. High School too. I remember the first time I ever looked out the window and saw the riot gear with the helmets and all. That scared me. That that was worse than the actual riot. Is the I think they had guns on their backs and had these um, helmets with these big glass faces on them, and they had the helicopters coming in. I remember teachers with two by fours with nails sticking up, swinging them to get the kids back in the classrooms, and that was, that was scary. Marlena Wallace, a strict Baptist, a serious student, could not believe what was happening at her school. Running up and down the halls, there was wild screaming. It seemed bedlam to me. 
those of us who didn't participate in the riots sat quietly and there was while the madness was going on out in the halls and on the grounds i sat in this room and a cement block came through the window were there any peacemakers among the students mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. robert robert was robert lee perhaps the only student who looked for common ground i knew that this was the beginning of my change in life that i that I was probably gonna become a man at that point. And uh, I was ready for the challenge. I had made up in my mind that I was going to make the best of the challenge. But there was open hostility. Sure, sure, there was always a group of people who you knew were, um, did not like black, black students, did not like the black students, did not want to deal with black students. Were you called a nigger here? Sure. Did it hurt? No, because I knew what I was. Was there any hostility towards you among the black students? Sure, I was an Uncle Tom. And uh, it hurt. Marlena Wallace had gotten to know Robert Leake in the choir. He was a great person. Um, he had ideals, and he stood up for them, and he, he believed in things. She remembers Robert in perhaps his finest hour. I went out into the parking lot, and there was madness. People running around and screaming. And I saw this one student standing in the middle of all of those students saying, this is not the way. We've got to get along with one another. I thought he was going to die. I really thought he would be dead. And so I called him that night, which, which for a girl to call a boy, period, was, was a big no-no. But for a white girl from my family to call a black boy was a big, I was very nervous dialing the phone. But he was there, and I think we talked on the phone for maybe three hours that day. And we um, dis discovered that we had a lot in, in common, that we believed a lot of the same things. Marlena Wallace and Robert Leake became friends, good friends, very good friends. And they tried to keep their friendship a secret. In that atmosphere, <clears throat> how difficult would it be for, say, a black young man and a young white woman to be friends would it have been possible no nah, that that's not anywhere near feasible not not not, not that, that year anyway yeah. yeah they both would have been in trouble right there was suspicion two two of my teachers called me out of class and talked to me about it what they say they both said that i was putting both of our lives in danger maybe more his than mine and that it just couldn't be it was pretty daring. It was probably the most daring thing I had ever done in my life. You have to think of the times at that particular time, and we were aware of what was going on and the reality that this was taboo, and um, it's, it was just something that you dealt with. We didn't see each other that much outside of school. There was no way. We couldn't even ride in a car, really, alone together. Really? Would you dare hold hands in public? No, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. Came time for the senior prom, right? Right. Was there any way you could go to the prom together? No. No way. Especially after the whole year of bad blood. There was so much of it. It would have been impossible. Would have been impossible. Would have been impossible. And we talked about it, and I didn't really want to go with anyone else. And I ended up not going. By the end of the school year, did it soften in any way? Were you able to take the hand of the guy you might have been flailing at a few months ago and shake his hand. Not in my mind. It didn't soften any. No. You mean that at the end, there was no let bygones be bygones? No, no absolutely not. No. no. Absolutely not. And you're still a little bitter about it. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's hurt, hurt my feelings today uh, because of the experiences then. And I think that's only natural. You know, to have gone through what we went through and and, and everything, it, unfortunately, it, it's left some bitter, bitter memories, and and uh, it's hard to overcome. To me, looking back, it was a worthwhile sacrifice, and it was something that had to be and had to happen. To you agree about. with that? It had to happen for progress. I yeah, it probably so. did. I grew up here, and things didn't happen on their own. They just didn't happen on their we own. We needed some help. Right. <laughs> Today, the class of 92 mingles with an ease that was unthinkable 20 years ago. But the old wounds are still there. At the reunion of the class of 71, only a handful of blacks turned up. 
you know, I really was going to go. And then I just felt like, well, I, I won't even be accepted there. They don't really remember me. You know, I'm, I'm not that important. But Robert Leake did come to the reunion, did come back to West Met. The school has changed a lot, uh, a lot less tension. I noticed that. Uh, I noticed as I came in, people were standing around, and uh, there were students of, of both races uh, intermingling, and uh, it, it was a, a good feeling. It really was. What were your feelings when you walk into this place? Very bittersweet. The best and the worst. What are they? The best probably would be choir concerts on the stage across the hall, walking from choir to the lunchroom with Robert. The worst being frightened for people's lives and being sad because it seemed that the students were driven to this. When you guys were all seniors, did you have any inkling that Marlene and Robert were really good friends? I knew they were, they were friends. I, I have since found out that they were probably more than just good friends. Did I didn't you, know that till just I now. Did, I, did you know? I didn't know. I did not know. Not at all. I knew because, uh, like I said, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Even though he really cared for her, it was like he had a little apprehension there. He wasn't sure which way he wanted to go. She gave me support when, when I was feeling down and when she was concerned about me, you know, I calmed and said, look, you know, I can take care of myself and things are going to be all right. In the midst of all that turbulence, to have someone that you adored, who adored you, it was wonderful. And yet, it was, it was heartbreaking, too. I, I'm sure we must have asked one another a hundred thousand times, you know, could we ever really, could anything come of this? And what happened to the class of 71? Well, all the people you've met still live in North Carolina. Glenn Aaron became a Muslim. He now works for the post office. Mike Dye runs a boat building business. Foy Pratt is president of an electronics company. Dale Wizenden runs a gun and sporting goods store. Sandy Bass Rideout is a mother of three. She and her husband run a convenience store. Linda Small Gable is a mother of five and somehow finds time to teach an aerobics class. Suzanne Price Black is a mother of two and runs a daycare center at the Methodist Church. And Robert and Marlena, well, they graduated, went to college, and drifted apart. Robert is in management with the Charlotte Department of Transportation. He's the father of two. Marlena Wallace grew up to be a professional singer. She's married and has three children. The class reunion brought them together for the first time. He put on a few pounds, but, but other than that, he was very much the same. I called him on the phone right before the reunion, and when he answered the phone, 20 years fell away. It was exactly the same voice. It was sweet. Did you ever wonder how uh, things might have ended up differently if the social climate had been different? I wondered all these years, often. If you think all real estate organizations are alike, there's something you should know. In a nationwide survey, homeowners were asked which real estate organization they think would do the most to help you sell your home. And the name that came up most often was Century 20. By a very big margin, 5 to 1. Shouldn't you have the one that's head and shoulders above the rest? Century 21. Quality results depend on making the right investments, and at Ford Motor Company, that begins with our employees.